Hey, one of the questions I've been getting a lot lately is, uh, is about uh, the certain effect that uh, I've got with some of my close-up shots. Now, this is uh, something that you can see in some of the older videos um, about close-up photography and macro photography. Uh, and so I get this question, hey, Ed, uh, these pictures look really cool. How do you get such a dark background in these shots? And uh, the cool thing is, I'm going to give you the answer to that. But what's so cool is that this answer applies not only to close-up shots, like uh, in this example, uh, it also applies to macro and even to portrait photography, which is really cool because uh, lots of times in portraits, you want to uh, try to have sort of a darker background, especially in low key shots. All right, again, here's an example of what this effect looks like. And let me just go ahead and uh, quickly talk about the gear that I'm using for these examples. Um, my flash trigger is uh, the Godox X1T. S and it's S because uh, we're using Sony. But it could be the X1TC if you're using Canon, X1TN if you're using Nikon, you get the idea. So they come in uh, different varieties for different brands of camera. And then I've got a flash unit that matches to it. This is a TT685. In this case, it's the S, but uh, I think you can use any, you can use the S with the C um, transmitter. It doesn't really matter what version of this flash you use. Uh, I happen to be using the TT685S. Uh, so this combination really works well together. So if we take a look at the example shot again, what, you, what you're seeing here essentially is an underexposed background. That's how you're getting that darker background, even in uh, ambient light conditions where the, the light in the background to the naked eye is nice and bright. Uh, this, so this could be outdoors, it could be indoors, doesn't matter. Uh, to the naked eye, you're, you're seeing the background, but when you take that shot, when you're making that exposure, uh, you get that really cool isolated look because the background is so dark. All right, so maybe kind of to drive this point home, let's take a look at what the shot looks like without the flash. And you can see without the flash, the not only is the background underexposed, but so is the subject. So the combination of the ambient light and the camera settings determine exposure. And in this case, I'm getting an underexposed shot. When I'm doing close-up photography, I also sometimes like to use something like this. It's like, a, I call it a mini soft box. Uh, this is a Velo brand version of it. It's nice and round. Uh, sometimes I use uh, rectangular shaped ones. It's nothing magical. It just, it just gives you, it's just a slightly, it doesn't really give you softer light. This is still pretty small. It's relatively small. Um, but what it does is it spreads the light out. It gives you a little more surface area for that light to shine on your subject. So what's happening in shots like this is uh, if you get your flash to a certain uh, power for the, you know, the proper power for the exposure and at a certain distance, everything's going to line up just right. You're going to have a, the right power, the right distance to properly expose your subject. And so uh, what that distance is, uh, trial and error and a little experience and you'll get the right power and distance for the camera settings that you're using. Alternatively, you can use TTL. And a lot of people say, you know, I get these comments, Ed, why are you telling people to use TTL? That's the wrong thing to do. You, you know, TTL is bad. It's evil. It's not. TTL is a tool. It's there for a purpose. You're paying for it. Why not use it? It's like, uh, why are people driving automatic uh, transmission cars instead of stick? Well, you know, uh, because it's there, it's useful. If it works, use it, right? It can make things a lot faster, especially for photography like this, where any little change in distance can make a difference on your exposure. Now back to the dark background thing, all right? So uh, why isn't this flash providing enough light for your background? Well, for one, the flash isn't pointed at your background, and for another, distance matters, right? So uh, the distance between your flash and your subject is pretty close uh, in a shot like this, but the distance between the flash and the background, relatively, it's miles away. So the flash isn't really going to affect the background like this. It's not gonna affect the background exposure uh, in that way. Basically, the flash is too far from the background to make much difference. All right, so what if we wanted our background uh, to show up a little bit more in our shots, okay? What if we wanted to bring up that exposure to our background? So a few things that we can do. We basically got three different camera settings that we can 
uh, work with to change the exposure of the background. That's ISO or ISO, aperture, and uh, shutter speed. All right, so let's see what changing the ISO does for the shot. As you can see, the flash exposure now looks too bright, even though we brought the background exposure up, the ambient light uh, exposure has come up, but uh, the, the flash exposure is too bright. So what can you do? Uh, you've got the background the way that you want it, uh, but your subject's to just lit up now. Well, you can uh, change the power settings on your flash, or you can uh, move the flash a little farther away from your subject. But uh, now you're changing lots of things, and that, that's making things complicated. And it's, you know, why would you make things more complicated? What about the aperture? What if we leave the ISO where it is? We just change the aperture. Again, you can bring up the exposure of the ambient light by opening up that aperture. But again, you'll have the flash uh, the, the exposure on the subject is going to be too bright. And again, you can change the power of the flash or you can change the distance of the flash to the subject, which, you know, really doesn't really work all that well, especially if you're trying to get a certain uh, look to the lighting. Uh, there you go. You, you're, you're changing too many things again, making it more complicated. Why would you do that? Our third option is to change the shutter speed, right? Leave the ISO alone, leave the aperture alone. They're where you want them. Uh, leave the power settings alone on the flash, the distance. Don't change anything else. You could just change the shutter speed. And now like magic, the background exposure just comes up. So that makes things a lot simpler, right? Just just ride that shutter speed if you want to change the look of the uh, background or ambient exposure. Uh, keep your flash the same. Whether you're using TTL or doing it manually, uh, I do either one. It just kind of depends on how I'm feeling um, or the conditions, how much time I have to work with. But uh, you've got the flash where you want it. Don't change anything. You've got your ISO uh, down real low. You've got your aperture where you want it, maybe f11, f16. But if we change that shutter speed, we can allow more ambient or constant light in the scene, uh, bringing that exposure up. And uh, essentially, because the flash is such of such a short duration, the flash isn't constant. It's just like the flash only illuminates your subject for a tiny fraction of the time that your shutter curtains open. So the shutter speed doesn't really have any effect on your flash exposure. That's something to keep in mind. So what's making the background so dark in pictures like these is a combination of your camera settings and uh, how much ambient light you have in the scene. Uh, and how can you affect that exposure? How can you uh, manipulate how light or dark your background is? Uh, that's easy. If you're using flash, uh, keep your flash on your subject. That's the part that's being illuminated and the rest of the light is being controlled by your shutter speed. Faster shutter speeds, the darker the background. Slower shutter speeds, the lighter the background. Now, of course, uh, there are some limitations here because uh, native flash sync speed uh, tops out at around uh, 1 250th of a second for a lot of cameras. Uh, you can use high speed sync also, but that's a story for another day. So again, what's making your background dark is that the camera settings that you're using uh, are intentionally underexposing the background and ambient light. The flash you're using is properly exposing your subject, and uh, and that's how it works. Hey guys, I want to thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope this information is somewhat uh, useful for you. I hope it answers a lot of those questions about getting those. Uh, backgrounds uh, darker or lighter depending on what you want to do uh, you know what to do hit subscribe hit that uh, little bell notification icon too because you can hit subscribe and if you don't hit the bell you may not get notified of when the next video is coming out and I want you to get notified because I want you to watch my next video anyway hit that like button uh, leave a comment uh, that's about all I've got for you today guys see you next time